what you see on the board is what we had discussed, what we had started discussing about exergy. Uh, I would be repeating it uh, because we had a break. Uh, just in case you had forgotten what we were discussing, I will do a quick revision before I move to the next concern. Okay, so that this is the plan of today's lecture. So in order to test whether you have really followed uh, what was discussed, let me ask you one question and I'll be uh, writing that question on the board. Okay. You can uh, solve this and uh, write your answers along with your name okay, in, the, uh, in the questions column. Okay. So that allow me to write the question. And Pending the question on the board now. Okay. Uh, so I am interested in finding, let us say, the exergy. Find the exergy or available energy. Find the exergy or available energy. Uh, of uh, the heat of the heat okay find the exergy or available energy of the heat find the exergy or available energy available energy of uh, let us say of 1000 kilojoules of heat of 1000 kilojoules of heat okay available from the source available from the source from the source which is at From the source which is at let me erase this. Source which is at thousand Kelvin. Okay. Thousand Kelvin. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> let us say that the ambient temperature is ambient temperature is ambient means surrounding temperature is let us say 20 27 degree centigrade 27 degree centigrade okay so i want you to calculate the available energy or exergy uh, this is just to uh, is sort of revision of the concepts which we have done and i want to ensure that you have internalized this concept. Okay, so I am interested in finding the available energy of the heat, okay, of the heat which is being supplied by the source, and the source is at 1000 Kelvin. The source is at 1000 Kelvin, and this heat is being supplied, the quantity of that heat is given to be 1000 kilojoules. I'm interested in finding the available energy or exergy of this heat. Okay. So tell me what is the exergy or available energy? Tell me the exergy or available energy. And how do we calculate that? Okay. How do we calculate that? I'm waiting for your responses before I explain the concept again. Any answers?
Okay, Kunal has given some answer, Kunal and Garvi. Anybody else? Apart from Kunal and Garvi, I want others also to answer. Okay, Garvi has given some formula. Pages is writing some formula. I want the answer, Pages. Pages sign up. Nikhil Pardesh has given some answer. Nikhil, Tejas, Kunal, Gargi, anybody else in the class? Okay. So let me explain this because I feel that very few students are answering this. This was already explained to you. Formula is right, Gargi, but uh, we need to explain this to the class once again, I guess. So uh, allow me to explain this. How do we calculate? Okay. Okay, so only few students have answered Nikhil, Tejas, Gargi, Kunal, etc. So, how do you calculate this? So, we need to, in order to calculate the available energy or exergy, uh, we need to do a thought exercise. Mm, uh, what is the thought exercise we need to do? Any answers? We need to do a thought exercise if I want to calculate the available energy of the heat. So, what thought exercise we need to do? We need to assume something, right? If I want to calculate the exergy, uh, we need to do a thought exercise. So, what is the thought exercise we need to do? Because the exergy is a maximum work potential, so we need to. No, no, that is not the thought exercise we need to do, Gargi. That is not that answer. Uh, we need to assume, okay, we need to assume that if I want to calculate uh, the exergy of heat, okay, which is available at certain temperature, at certain temperature, then we need to uh, uh, do a thought exercise, means we need to assume that that heat, that heat is supplied to a Carnot engine, that heat is supplied reversibly, that heat is supplied reversibly to the Carnot engine, to the Carnot engine, okay, and then we calculate the work output from that Carnot engine, okay. So, the thought exercise we need to do is that we need to assume that that heat goes to a Carnot engine, okay, reversibly and the Carnot engine produces work and that in that case and the Carnot engine rejects the heat to the dead state temperature right and the work output of that Carnot engine is than the exergy or available energy okay so let me let me draw this uh, what thought exercise we need to do uh, i will choose a different color for that okay so the thought exercise we need in order to calculate exergy okay to calculate exergy right uh, for this heat to calculate exergy uh, what we need to do is that we need to we need to think of we need to think of the heat which is available from the source which is at uh, given at 1000 kelvin is supplied okay it is assumed that this heat is supplied reversibly to a Carnot engine reversibly to a Carnot engine and this Carnot engine, this Carnot engine would reject the heat, would reject certain heat, okay, to the surroundings, to the surroundings which is at the ambient temperature, the okay, dead state temperature, dead state temperature, okay. So it is given in this problem that the dead state temperature is 27 degrees centigrade, so 27 plus 273 is 300 Kelvin. Okay, uh, the source is given to be at 1000 Kelvin and the heat 
which is supplied is also given to be uh, the heat whose exergy is to be found is given to be 1000 kilojoules. Okay. So, if the thought exercise is that this heat is supplied to a fictitious engine, a Carnot engine, and this work output of this Carnot engine, which would be the maximum work output, okay, this would be the exergy of the heat supply. This is the exergy of the heat supply. And what would be the work maximum? That work maximum is nothing but the efficiency of the Carnot engine, conversion efficiency of the Carnot engine, conversion of heat to work efficiency, that is the Carnot efficiency into heat, which is nothing but 1 minus T naught by T, T naught by T into Q, 1 minus T naught by T into Q. And in our case, this is, in our case, this is 1 minus, 1 minus T naught is 300, and P is 1000. Uh, let me <clears throat> write it somewhere else. Uh, I'm writing it here. Okay. So 1 minus 1 minus T naught is 300 and P is 1000 into Q is 1000. So this is 700 kilojoules okay so the thought exercise we need to do to calculate exergy is that we need to assume that the heat okay whose exergy is to be found out is is supplied to a Carnot engine which operates between the source temperature and dead set temperature and the work output of that Carnot engine is then the available energy or exergy okay yes or no is this understood now i hope this is clear to you Okay, so the answer is the available energy of 1000 kilojoules of heat, which is at 1000 Kelvin, okay, is equal to, is equal to 700 kilojoules, is equal to 700 kilojoules, okay, right. Now, I want you to show this 700 kilojoules on a temperature entropy diagram. I want you to show this 700 kilojoules on a temperature entropy diagram. So, how should I represent this 700 kilojoules on a temperature entropy diagram? So, let me use another page, okay, and another pen. So, in order to represent, okay, to represent exergy, exergy. representation in this case how would be the exergy represented representation so this exergy can be represented on a temperature entropy diagram okay first first i would represent first i would represent the uh, the heat supply so represent the heat supply. How much is the heat supply? Represent the heat supply, the heat on the temperature entropy diagram. Okay, which is at which is at thousand Kelvin, thousand Kelvin. So the heat supply would be the heat supply would be. So suppose this is thousand Kelvin. So suppose this is thousand Kelvin. So the heat supplied would be this portion which I drawn. Okay. This hatched area, this hatched area uh, shown by L. This hatched area is the heat supply. This is the heat supply. Okay. This is the heat supply. Okay. Now now i want you to show me i want you to show the unavailable energy on this gs diagram unavailable energy unavailable energy on the ts diagram unavailable energy on ts diagram for this given problem okay for this given problem 
So the unavailable energy on the PS diagram, okay, would be would be I'm using the red pen for that. Let me use some other pen. Okay, I'm using the red pen now for showing the unavailable energy. So for showing the unavailable energy, I need to show the dead state temperature. I need to show the dead state temperature. So 300 Kelvin is the dead state temperature which is given. Okay. And the one, the rectangle which is shown by red, the rectangle which is shown by red now, this rectangle, okay, and with the vertical line, and with the vertical line, this rectangle, this rectangle is the unavailable energy. This rectangle is the unavailable energy. So calculate the unavailable energy and tell me the answer. What is the unavailable energy? You tell me the answer. What is the unavailable energy? You tell me the answer. No, that is not the unavailable energy. What is the unavailable energy? Forget your answer is wrong. What is the unavailable energy? You tell me the answer. Yeah, Kunal is right. Kunal is right. So, if you look at the diagram, okay, uh, let me explain you this. Uh, only uh, one or two students. Yes, Ganesh is right. Ganesh is right. So, look at this. Uh, let me, yeah, yeah, Gargi is right. No, no, Gargi, 300 kilojoules is not available energy. Gargi, you are making some mistake. Uh, see, unavailable energy would be what? Unavailable energy would be, see, you are supplying, you are supplying 100 kilojoules. Okay, let me go to the uh, initial diagram. See, uh, on the board, you see the area the area ABCD, uh, let me just uh, finish this diagram. Okay, uh, I will call this as EF. Okay, area ABCD, area ABCD is the available energy. Area ABCD is the available energy. Area uh, CEFD or CDFE, whatever you want, the area CEFD is the unavailable energy, is the unavailable energy, okay? And the area ABEF, area ABEF is the heat supplied. Area, if you have understood this diagram, then it should be very clear to you. So again, I will repeat, look at this diagram. The area ABEF, that is the area under A to B, the area under A to B, uh, I'll be using other pen now, uh, other color. Let me use a green. Okay, uh, just to highlight the area under A to B, the area under A to B, that is this area, this total area under A to B means area A, B, E, F. That is the area A, B, E, F. This area is the heat which is supplied. Okay, this is the heat which we are talking about, whose exergy is to be found out. This is the heat whose exergy is to be found out. That is A, B, E, F, right? Now, of this A, B, E, F, not all the heat is excelled. Not all the heat is available energy. Then how much is the available energy? The available energy would be the area A, B, C, D, okay? So the area exergy the exergy would be, or the available energy would be, the available energy or exergy would be the area, the area A, B, C, D. The area A, B, C, D is the available energy or exergy. So if I use a green pen for showing available energy, this is the available energy. So the green hatched area is the available energy. Now, obviously, obviously, if Q is the available energy, uh, sorry, Q is the heat supplied, and of this Q, of this Q, 
available energy is ae okay available energy is ae then q minus ae is the unavailable part okay so the heat the heat under consideration can be the heat under consideration can be thought of as like this so of this heat some of the heat is available that is available energy and the remaining part is unavailable energy and the remaining part is unavailable energy right so or you you can use other term of this heat of this heat some of the heat is the exergy some of the heat is the exergy and the remaining is the energy which is not available energy okay right not energy energy a n e r g y okay or a e plus u e available energy plus unavailable energy is the heat supply so if you look at it from the on the ts plane if you look at the representation of available energy and unavailable energy it becomes clear to you that the area of this rectangle a b c d which is nothing but the work output the area of the rectangle a b c d is what it is nothing but the work output of the carnot engine this is nothing but the work output of the carnot engine w max okay w max this is the available energy this is the available energy provided this temperature tc is equal to td is the dead state temperature provided the temperature tc is equal to td is the dead state temperature okay and the area under the dead state temperature line suppose the dead state temperature is t not so the area under t not the area under t not is the unavailable energy is the unavailable energy okay so the exergy equation or the available energy equation becomes like this ae is equal to heat which is q heat which is q which is nothing but the area a b e r this q is the area a b e f minus minus t not delta s means what area t not delta is what area area b c e f or c d e f whatever you like okay area c d e f and this addition of the two sorry uh, and this a e available energy is area area a b c d i hope this is clear to you i hope this is clear to you neha you need to correct your answer now neha so what would be the correct answer neha for the problem given problem neha aire tell me the correct answer now if you have followed this discussion tell me the correct answer nikhil tejas yeah garg has followed this now neha can you tell the answer ganesh ganesh has already understood this nikhil pardesi anybody okay it is not that only few students should answer the entire class i see around 120 plus students are, are attending this class okay so i am expecting that others should also try to answer it it is not a very difficult concept okay you need to just uh, pause a bit okay uh, think a bit right revise a bit you are also given videos for uh, revision okay so i want you all of you to understand this and i am purposely going slow so that uh, you internalize this very interesting concept this is very interesting concept okay So anybody else who wants to answer this question what is the unavailable energy yes yes correct energy means unavailable energy i am using a different term so energy is unavailable energy right got it anybody who wants to answer this question what is the unavailable energy neha you want to revise your answer neha yeah, aire Rushali, Yash Mohre, Yugandara, Vivek Saudari, Vidhan, Varun, Utkarsh, Tejas Patil, Tanya, Kishan Kanade, Siddhil Jado, Shivam Hande. 
Any answers you have? What is the unavailable energy? Okay, so let me move ahead now. I assume, okay, Nikhil has correctly answered now. Nikhil, you are understood, I guess. Uh, others, Shiva Bhande, Shantanu Dharmadikari, Shifan Patan, Sriyas, Selva Rajin, Satya Prakash, Parida, Saurav Bakre, Sanket Zado, Samir Patil, Rutvik Patil, so many Patils are there here, Roshan Zado, Raju, Purva, Prathamesh, Pranjal, Pranav, Puja Ward, Nitin Patil, so many. Neha, have you got the answer, Neha? All right. Uh, I assume that you understood. Okay, and uh, let me go ahead now with the uh, related topic that is the decrease in unavailable energy. Okay, so so the answer is so the answer as I told you for this problem is the available energy is 700 kilojoules and unavailable energy is 300 kilojoules. Okay. Now I'm moving to the next part, next part that is, uh, let me use a uh, red pen now again. So I would now come to the concept of decrease in available energy, decrease in decrease in available energy due to due to irreversibility due to irreversibility to understand that we had had a lot of discussion on irreversibility okay so we said that the second law of thermodynamics okay uh, points out that a reversible process is ideal process and all the actual processes are irreversible processes. All the actual processes are irreversible processes. However, however, as an engineering uh, uh, graduate, okay, or as an engineer who is working in the field, uh, our aim, our aim should be to decrease the irreversibility. Our aim should be to decrease the irreversibility, right? And how to decrease the irreversibility? That we need to understand it. Uh, with the help of the concept of exception, right? So here I will be considering a special case of irreversibility that is irreversible heat transfer, okay? irreversible heat transfer. I'm going to show you that uh, if the heat transfer is irreversible, heat transfer is irreversible, then that leads to the destruction in exergy. That leads to the destruction in exergy or that leads to the decrease in the exergy, decrease in the available energy. So let me ask you this question, that what do you understand by irreversible heat transfer? What do you understand by irreversible heat transfer? I want you to answer. Uh, it would be better if others also answer, uh, apart from the students who are regularly answering. It would be nice if others also chip in and they try to give me this answer that, what do you understand by irreversible heat transfer? Irreversible heat transfer. I'm going to show you that irreversible heat transfer. Yeah, Gunjan is right. Gunjan is right. I want you to uh, appreciate that irreversible heat transfer leads to exergy destruction, decrease in available energy, decrease in exergy. Okay, so Gunjan is right. Uh, huge temperature difference between what and what? Gunjan. Huge temperature difference between what and what? And what is the meaning of uh, reversible heat transfer? And what is the meaning of reversible heat transfer? Anybody? Because this is a central concept. Okay, Gargi has typed up. 
guys uh, pages is saying equivalent to xlg destroyed now pages uh, that is okay but uh, what what is the meaning of irreversible heat transfer irreversible heat transfer leads to xlg destruction okay but what is that okay gunjan is saying uh, heat temperature difference between source and sink no no gunjan that is incorrect is not the temperature difference between source and sink between the two interacting bodies right correct garge is right anybody okay now let me explain you this uh, yeah neha is right but finite temperature difference between what and what neha kunal in reversible absorbs heat q1 no 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 kunal that is not the case in reversible as well as irreversible the heat transfer would be the same that is not the issue kunal that is not the issue neha is saying between two bodies okay okay let me uh, answer this uh, when i am saying there is a irreversible heat transfer okay uh, as uh, many of you have said correctly uh, uh, the temperature difference between the temperature difference between the bodies the source and the body which is accepting the heat okay that temperature difference is finite that temperature difference is finite okay if the temperature difference is extremely small negligible okay if the temperature difference is negligible then we say it is almost a reversible heat transfer almost a reversible heat transfer okay so now uh, now we would be discussing that what is so wrong about irreversible heat transfer let us talk about two cases for you to appreciate and i will be asking you a question suppose okay take this two cases i'm using a black now okay suppose suppose there is a source at 1000 kelvin source is at 1000 kelvin okay uh, there is other source which is at 1000 kelvin again okay and this source is transferring the heat let us say to the water water which is boiling boiling in the boiler okay yesterday you had a discussion on what is a boiler okay so water with the boiler which is boiling at let us say at let us say 1000 kelvin and here you have another case where the water is boiling this is at almost 1000 kelvin at 900 kelvin 900 kelvin okay uh, let us say that the heat transfer in this case is 500 kilojoules and here also the heat transfer is 500 kilojoules so let me ask you the question that this is case one this is case two okay so whether whether there is there is a heat loss heat loss in case two okay as compared to case one as compared to case one whether there is a heat loss in case two as compared to case one yes or no yes or no i hope you got the question and the question is very simple that the source is at thousand kelvin and there is a heat transfer of 500 kilojoules to water 
the second case is sources are thousand kelvin and there is a heat transfer of 500 kJ to water. Okay. My question is whether there is a heat loss in case two as compared to the case one. Whether there is a heat loss in the case two as compared to the case one. Okay, Garge is saying yes. Kunal is saying yes. Tanaya is saying yes. Nikhil is saying yes. Samir says yes. Vinay says yes. Ganesh is saying yes. Yes, so many people saying yes. Akanksha, all of you are saying yes, but all of you are wrong. The answer is no. The answer is no. Saurabh, Roshan, Gunjan, Pawan, Saurabh, Dado, Akanksha, Sankhe, Yash More, Vinay Shinde, Samir. The answer is no. You see that in case one, the heat transfer is 500 kilojoules. In case two, the heat transfer is 500 kilojoules. In both the cases, there is no heat loss. In both the cases, there is no heat loss. Heat loss is zero in case one. Heat loss is zero in case two. Are you getting the point? Heat loss is zero in case one. Heat loss is zero in case two. So what has happened? What has happened in case two is that there is no heat loss. There is exergy loss. Exergy destruction is the correct word. There is an exergy destruction in case two, whereas there is no exergy destruction in case one. Okay, let me explain you this. Let me explain you this by calculating this. Okay, let me explain you this by calculating this. So, calculate the exergy in case one and calculate the exergy in case two. Calculate the exergy of the water. Okay, calculate the exergy of the water in case one and exergy of the water in case two. I want you to calculate the exergy of water in case one and exergy of water in case two. Assume the dead state temperature to be 300 Kelvin. Assume the dead state temperature to be 300 Kelvin. 300 Kelvin. So case one, case one, the exergy would be, the exergy would be Q into one minus T naught by T. And case two, the exergy would be I am talking about the exergy of the water. Okay, exergy of the water would be Q one minus T naught by T dash. Okay, so this is five hundred kilojoules. One minus three hundred upon thousand. Okay, and this is 500 into 1 minus 300 upon 900. So tell me the answer 1 and answer 2. What is the value? What is the value? Calculate using your calculators and tell me the numbers. Now it's simply a question of mathematics, it has nothing to do with concepts as such. So you just calculate fast and tell me the answer in case one and case two. Case one and case two. Okay. So, pages, Nikhil, they have said that first case it is 350, 
and second case this goes so it is 0.775 around 350 kilojoules and case 2 it is around 333 case 2 is what 333 okay right right okay yugandara is right uh, so so what what does that mean that is correct this is just a calculation what you understand from this yugandara what do you understand from this neha tejas samir what do you understand from this whether there is a heat loss in case one or case two there is no heat loss okay there is no heat loss in case one and case two then what has been lost and why it has been lost what has been lost and why it has been lost yes so exergy has been lost okay exergy has been lost and this has been lost because of this has been lost because of finite temperature difference finite temperature difference in case one you see that the working fluid that is water in our case and the source are at the same temperature case one so case one is a case of reversible heat transfer case one is a case of reversible heat transfer whereas case two case two is a case of irreversible heat transfer so because of irreversible heat transfer what you find is that the exergy has been destroyed from 350 kilojoules to 330 kilojoules okay there is a decrease in available energy from 350 kilojoules to 333 kilojoules means about 20 kilojoules of exergy 20 kilojoules of exergy has been lost okay destroyed and why is that exergy destroyed? The exergy has been destroyed because of irreversible heat transfer. Because of irreversible heat transfer. Now suppose, now suppose, yeah, correct, that, that is correct, Tanaya. Now suppose you increase the irreversibility. You increase the irreversibility. Okay. So how do I increase the irreversibility? Suppose I want to increase the irreversibility. Okay. So how do I increase the irreversibility? Suppose case three you consider where there is more irreversibility. So more irrevers irreversibility means let us say case three. Okay, let me write down the case three. Suppose you take case three. Okay, case three wherein wherein there is a source. Again at 1000 kilojoules. Okay. It is transferring the heat, which is the same heat quantity. Please note. And let us say that this water, which is now boiled at, at 500 Kelvin. At 500 Kelvin. Okay. So what has happened in this case? Case 1. Case 1, what was the delta T? Delta T between the source and the working fluid. Case 2, what was the delta T? Delta T1, I would say. Delta T2, case 2. And what is the delta T in case 3? So in the case 1, the delta T was 0. That is which delta T? Delta T between the working fluid and the source. Working fluid and the source. Okay. The water which is boiling and the source, that temperature difference is zero in case one. So the case one is a reversible heat transfer. Case two, the delta T was 100 Kelvin. Okay. So it means it is an irreversible heat transfer. Irreversible heat transfer. And case three, how much is the delta three? It is 
500 kelvin so which is more irreversible case 2 or case 3 which is more irreversible case 2 or case 3 gunjal which is more irreversible case 2 or case 3 okay they just Bargi, you are right. Nikhil, you are right. Neha, you are right. Neha, yeah, Samir is right. So, case 3 is more irreversible. Now, you calculate the exergy in case 3. Calculate, Tanya, you are right. Calculate the exergy in the case 3. So how do you calculate the exergy in the case 3? So for that, let me again write down the expression. So exergy would be one minus T naught by T double dash now upon N to Q. So 1 minus, let's say temperature I am taking as 300 upon 500 and the heat transfer is 500 kilojoules. Okay. So this becomes 250 kilojoules. Okay. So what was the exergy in case 1? What was the exergy in case 1? Exergy in case 1 was how much? 350 kilojoules. Exergy in case 2 was how much? 333 kilojoules. And in case 3, we have 250 kilojoules. Okay, so what you, you should appreciate now that the energy is the same. The energy is the same in all the three cases, 500 kilojoules. However, because of irreversible heat transfer, that is the decrease in available energy. There is a decrease in available energy. I hope this is very clear to you now. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. And let me now show you the proof for this. Or I guess that any doubts regarding this before I begin with the proof. Proof I would cover in the next class. But I want you to ask doubt if you have any doubt regarding this. With the help of illustrations, I have shown what I have shown is that if there is a if there is an irreversible heat transfer, if there is an irreversible heat transfer that leads to exergy destruction, that leads to decrease in available energy. Okay, that leads to decrease in available energy. Ganesh, calculation to plug 3 by 5 or 2 by 5. Okay, 200. Okay, okay. Right, Ganesh, you are. Thanks for pointing out, Ganesh. Uh, this is. I'll just erase this. Okay. This, Ganesh, thanks for pointing out this correction. So, case 3. Uh, it is 200 kilojoules. Okay. So, okay. So it is 200 kilojoules. 200 kilojoules. So the point is, the point is, <clears throat> if so, our aim should be to ensure to design the heat engines. Our aim should be to design the heat engines. Where? So what are the practical insights we get from this? Okay. Our aim should be to design the heat engine such that the working fluid of that heat engine accepts the heat, accepts the heat at a temperature which is closer to, which is closer to the temperature of the source. For example, if you talk about boiler, if you talk about boiler, then and suppose the firm, the few gases in the boiler at are at thousand Kelvin, are at thousand Kelvin, then we need to make the water boil at closer to 1000 kelvin okay that is what is the insight so 
why is that important that is important because the work potential of the heat work potential of the heat would be decreased as the temperature is decreased okay as the temperature is decreased so the exergy or the maximum work potential is obtainable if the heat is of highest grade and when is the heat is of highest grade when it is a higher temperature right so what do you what do you uh, can conclude from this is if you are having a heat of 500 kilojoules okay which is at 1000 kelvin sorry this is kelvin not 1000 which is at 1000 kelvin right and if you have a heat of 500 kilojoules which is at uh, uh, let us say 900 Kelvin, then the heat which is at 900 Kelvin is of better quality than heat which is at 500 Kelvin. Okay, so the heat which is at 1000 Kelvin is better than the heat which is at 900 Kelvin. The heat which is at 900 Kelvin is of better quality than the heat which is at 500 Kelvin. Okay, so the quality aspect of energy is quantified by the term which is the exergy. I hope this is very clear to you. And in the next class, I will derive an expression. The expression has already been derived in the video which has been shared by Professor Murukkar. Okay, so in that video, you would see the derivation which I will be taking again in the next class, uh, where I would show that because of irreversible heat transfer, that is because of the heat transfer to the finite temperature difference that is the decrease in available energy or in other words that is an increase in the unavailable energy okay so with this i end this webinar for today have a good day thank you very much i hope you have enjoyed this lecture have a good day Thank you.